Hello everyone and welcome. Yes, my name is Arafire and welcome back to another episode of Look Out and Shout. And today we are finally getting round to reviewing Transart BWM-03 Metal Panther Commander, their version of a Transmetal Cheetor, but the metallic reissue paint. So, I passed up getting this figure when it first came out. I saw it being released, I wasn't too taken with the Ravage of their first offering and Transmutate before that. But when I saw this, I thought, okay, we're going down the Transmetal line. I wasn't so taken with this because I still hold the very original toy in high regard. Funny enough, I have it here. And I still think that's one of the best toys made, similar to Tarantulas. I felt, how are you going to beat that? This is still a very good toy. So I thought, okay, why should I? And I didn't feel from some images it looked that much more improved but as I was getting the trans art releases I thought ah I probably should go back and get it but then lo and behold trans art decided to re-release this figure with a metallic paint and that's what I'm here with today and of course you too can pick up this figure from showzstore.com where I got this figure from I'll put a link in the description below but if you would be so kind on your next show Z purchase to enter at the top of the viewer page and uh, support your favorite reviewer, enter code FIRE1, F-Y-R-E-1, and that puts some points onto my channel whenever you make a purchase of your own at no cost to yourselves. But I will say, whilst I did get this particular figure from Shozy at that point, but I will say Primetime Toys have also got this figure in stock on their website at the moment in the metallic paint edition, more by coincidence than plan. But I will put a link in the description below if you want to use them as well. Please ensure to use their codes of WELCOME10 or POWERUP10 for 10% off your first order. Inside the box comes with the collector's card and a QR code to a video for transformation instructions because of course TransArt do not do actual instructions with the video. No gloves as well. Plastic shelling which holds a stand for posing in flight mode as well as a couple of places for accessories for his tail. And that's it, let's have a look at the figure itself, shall we? And here he is in his robot mode. And you can see that metallic paint shining straight away, particularly on the back of the beast mode legs. It's a very reflective silver. But initially, it's much the same as the original release. The chrome is doing a lot of the work, particularly the gold center chest piece that will make up the back of the beast mode. The teal green, perhaps is a bit more reflective but it does look very similar to the original release and i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing um, you can see he's leaning a bit forward i'll cover this in a bit more when i get it in for a closer look but there is a case of the ankles are strong but there's some die casts in some funny places here so weight distribution is a bit of a thing for him uh, but he does look cool um, nice expression on the face a cheeky chappy expression even if it is the only expression he does come with sadly Accessories are maybe a little bit thin. He comes with his flight stand and he comes with his weapon. That's more or less it. But then again, Cheetor didn't have an awful lot else. But he does look quite cool. I'm quite pleased to get him in this metallic paint scheme. Let's get him for a closer look. So if I get him in for a closer look, you'll see what I mean around that face sculpt. It, it's nice. I love the green eyes. The paint's really good, particularly on this metallic version. But that constant smile, it's not a mouth you can close. It's no alternative face plate you can put on. It just comes across a little bit derpy, maybe. He was always a bit happy-go-lucky, but yeah, I just think if you want him to come across in a more aggressive, serious phase, um, you're not going to get that with this figure. It's just a minor annoyance. His legs can look a little stumpy. Maybe. Maybe a tiny bit. Bend at the elbow is good. Bend at the wrist is good. Now, I will say whilst we're here, the ears are very easy to come away. Uh, and that will happen a lot. They just slot back in. They don't, don't break off as such. But it is quite an irritable thing. Because as I say, you transform him a couple of times. And he will just kind of break apart a little bit. Not too bad. It's a finer digit. And I'd rather it come apart and go back on and break off altogether. The ankle support is good. Is fine because he is quite back heavy as you can imagine. There's a lot of those heavy ratchets to be stored in the legs of died a, you know, legs of beast mode, but the ankles can, they're, they're fine, but you've got to go back like here and you can see, there he goes. So you have to lean him right, but there's enough weight and tolerance in the tension in the joints 
maybe lean him a little bit forward to counteract it, maybe. But other than that, he's pretty cool. He's pretty fine. Articulation-wise, can look up a bit, can't really look down, left and right. Stiff at the shoulder and will come unplugged for transformation, so that's just something to bear with. Shoulder out on a friction. Bend at the elbow, but you end up bending the wrist. And whilst I like the wrist feature, and with the thumb that opens and closes, you end up doing the two as you move them, because you wanna, and that thing's just come off again, but you wanna kind of tilt from the elbow pad, but you end up holding this as it's the larger piece, and you end up crumpling it up a bit like that. But it's nice to have the ability to make it a wrist moving structure. There is a waist rotation, which is quite good. Hip out on a friction, but won't go any higher. I think that's a bit of a shame. It's only this design groove that I think they could have done that differently and given a full 90 degree outward. It does go out pretty far on the side. Some very tight friction bend there, and you do get this alternative bend, but that's much more for beast mode in mind. And ankles tilt does exist quite well. Actually goes both directions. It will hold the weight, the ankles, but I do wonder, could he have done with bigger legs maybe, bigger feet to take the weight? Because he is quite back heavy. He will hold a pose, but you have to, I find you have to tilt him forward. And maybe he has a tendency to even then lean back. I feel like I've tilted him quite a bit forward there. You might not see it, but once he's there, he's fine. Uh, possibly the weaker of the two modes, at least so far. And here he is holding his weapon. Uh, the wrist bend he has gives him very good articulation of it, which is pretty good. Um, it's a bit ordinary. I never felt it was the best weapon that Cheetor could have, but it is quite cool when he can hold it in his hand and he can get some nice pose with it. Although I would say when he's got that smiling face on it, it does make him look a little less believable. But now I will say the good people at Transart thought to do this. You can actually do his shooting gun pose from the TV show. So on his arms, there are some butterfly clips where you bring the arms forward, tilt the hinges on the shoulders back, and you effectively transform his head together. But you can get that shooting phase as he would shoot green lasers from the palm of his hands that would come out of somewhere from within him. Okay, on to some comparisons. And here he is alongside Transart Skateboard Gorilla in their robot mode. Uh, that's a right scale, I think. He was big, was primal, and he was certainly bigger than he was in the first season of Beast Wars. But these two scaling about right, uh, yeah, just up to his shoulder or at the bottom of the shoulder more or less. And they do look really cool together. It's a nice design, particularly on the grey that they're going for. Here he is looking into a mirror. Here he is alongside Takara's version of a masterpiece scale Cheetor from the first season of Beast Wars. Uh, he is quite a bit taller. Um, the camera might not show it, but he does stand taller. And that's right. I think it's a natural growing up phase, so he should be bigger than the season one character. It was much more of an upgrade for Cheetor than it was for, say, anyone else. But that's how he looks alongside himself. And here he is alongside himself again. Here he is alongside Transart's Metal Leopard, their version of a Transmetal 2 Cheetor. What this Cheetor would effectively become in season three of Beast Wars. Um, not my favorite figure from Transart, but again, you see an upgrading. There is similarities. What I've noticed now is that the eyes in this robot mode on Transmetal 2 are very similar to the eyes in alt mode, beast mode, on Transmetal 1 Cheetor. Just a couple of things here and there. And here are all three of them, all pride of Cheetors. It does look quite cool when you get all three of them together. He's a character that's had quite a lot of growth and development. Um, and when you consider he goes quite far into Beast Machines, he's got a character that's got a lot of different modes and different representations of him. And so to get all three of them together, albeit one by Takara and two by Transart, yeah, it's nice to get all three of them side by side and you can see the journey that he actually goes on. And no contest really, here he is alongside Transart Metal T-Rex, their version of a Transmetal Megatron. Same company, but this again is probably right, this Megatron got very big, or Megatron was big in any guise. So Cheetor will probably, I like to think maybe Cheetor stood a little bit taller, maybe to the top of Megatron's waist, but different class of character, and I don't think there's any bones to really pick at. He completely dwarfs him, but they do look, as with all trans art figures, they do look very well together. And here he is alongside the original toy. Now, when you get them side by side, you really do see the shared engineering. But as I say, it's the original toy turned up to 10, not 11. So... 
yeah, it, it is what it is. It is a nice upgrade, but it just makes me think this toy was just as good. Now, I will say, if I get it in for a closer look on the original toy, he has a shouty face going all the time on his own. If you can just about see that. Whereas on the trans art version, he has this constant happy face. So I guess it depends how you really want to display it. I will say they both have the same ankle concerns. It's very easy for the two of them to fall back. So shared engineering, but that's how they look side by side. And here he is in his beast mode. That is a very shiny looking cheetor. It is a very reflective chrome based leopard, which you'd, or cheetah, which you'd expect. And it does do the job very well. My first thought is, as I think many people will have, it looks very similar to the original toy. And it is. That's not to say it's a bad thing, but much like with their tarantulas, and again, this is a earlier release than that tarantulas, it does do everything the original toy does and more, but maybe in this case, not too much more. I do love that gold body, which you'll see much more closely in a minute. The head sculpt as well is a very nice cheetah head. It's got a lot of character to it. There's posability there. It's got some very good ratchets on the front of the shoulders for getting a wide stance. I've had to sort of crumple him down a bit to get him on the turntable. He has quite a leg spread. He has quite a footprint to take up. It does look very, very nice. I'm not too wild on this bit in the middle, which is kind of his waist in bot mode, and it has a cascading... It has a very loose plastic feel to it, and I don't think it's the right shade of yellow as well. It matches the inner thigh, but to me in this mode where it's all covered up with a reflective gold, a chrome gold, a reflective silver, teal green, you've got this solid yellow in the middle, and it, to me that just stands out. But it does look good. I like the thickness, the wide stance of the shoulders. It gives a bit more presence, uh, and again, that cheetah head is a very nice addition it gives a lot of character to this mode which is not something you can often say for what is a metallic cheetah there's no natural feel through to it because it's not a actual animal it's a simulated actual cheetah but it's covered in metal let's get in for a closer look so you can see there i've got him into a bit more of a prowling or prancing stance ready to pounce and that's good i like that posability around the legs you can see the width that goes on there there's a lot to like for the figure in this mode. There's a lot of posability to it. You can't often say that about beast modes and really anything with four legs, but it's got a good stance that can be done to it. And before I go much further, if we go into articulation, have a listen to these ratchets. Surprisingly stiff. Now it holds the weight and it's quite a weighty figure, surprisingly so. But they're arms in bot mode and you don't, necessarily think particularly with cheetor of all characters that it would need to have the strength to hold up anything in bot mode he doesn't even hold a gun but it's to hold at least the front half of the weight but they still feel quite good ratchets arguably too strong for what's necessary but it's not a bad problem but very nice very reflective now i'll quickly touch on this as i'm here and i'll probably say this a couple of times i'm not a fan of that gap in between this is his hands that he would using a clasping mechanism, same as a show, and he would fire from, but it doesn't give a complete look of the jaw. And you can see there, the white gap shining through. It looks like his mouth's broken, and that does bother me. More than I thought it would, but it actually really does. It's a shame, because the cheetah head has a lot of character to it. I do really like how it looks. But otherwise, articulation, you get bend at the front elbow, which will be the same in bot mode. Bend at the paw is quite good, and a bit of rotation on the paw, which is very welcome, again, to get those wider stances. You can't turn the head. Now, that shouldn't come as any surprise for anyone who knows it, because you can see it's just the arms of bot mode stuck together, but you can't rotate. You can just see the two biceps of the bot mode there, but it doesn't give him any way to do a confused dog look. He can look left and right, but he can't turn, which is a shame, because I think... That kind of, if you could just tilt it maybe 10 degrees one's way or the other, it would give a nice bit of posability there. Back leg rotation is pretty good, but because of its prowling nature and the hips, that's as much front leg bend as you get, so you can't really bring the leg much more forward than that. 
but he has a pneumatic leg thing going on so again you can get a bit more of a hind stance which is quite good again these are bot mode legs and they're effectively flipped around for beast mode which again follows the same as the original toy follows it quite true but uh Whilst it's got very good mobility in some ways, a couple of things are missing which you feel it really would benefit from. Okay, on to some comparisons. Here he is alongside his original counterpart, the original Transmetal Cheetor. I still say, much like with Tarantulas, this is one of the best Transmetal toys made. It's got such good presence, such a fun transformation, easy transformation, and it's only just started yellowing, <laughs> but it's God knows it's old enough. But uh, it shares a lot of its same characteristics, other than, say, the accessing of the side wings, but you can see a size difference. It's night and day, really. Um, it, that's what I say, it's the original toy done up to 11. But I would say in this case, it feels like it's done up to 10 more than 11. It's very, very good. It is an improvement. It certainly looks nice in its paint, but it doesn't have that absolute killer vibe that Tarantulas did, when as soon as you picked it up, you realize it was superior. This is definitely better, but that's probably as much as it goes. Here he is alongside TransArt's version of Motor Spider, their version of a Tarantulas. Uh, I've got him in beast mode at the moment. These two look great together. Again, that paintwork is really shining through. But there is quite a difference between these figures in as much as other figures were released in between now and then. So after Cheetor, we came with Primal, then Megatron, then Rat Trap, and then eventually we got to Tarantulas. So improvements were made by this point, so there is differences even if this was released and re-released under a reissue for metallic paint. But you do sort of see a difference here, but the sizing, this is what I say, when you get them together, it's a very good looking set. There's a lot to like about this company and the work they do, and when you put all their offerings together, it looks so, so good. Here he is alongside TransArt's Vice Poison, their version of a Quick Strike. If you would have seen my review of this at the time, you'll know that this isn't my favorite figure from TransArt's, and I think a lot of people do share that opinion. But you put them together, again, they do look good. But it kind of defeats my argument that I just said. If this is an older figure and doesn't have some of the more modern advancements. This is one of their more recent figures, if not, as of recording, their latest brand new figure, for latest brand new sculpt. And that really has got some limitations to it. So, yeah, comparing apples and oranges, that Cheetor is so much better than that Quick Strike. And I think that Quick Strike is in the best mode possible. It is a bit of a letdown of that figure. Here he is alongside TransArt's other offering of a Transmetal Rat Trap, Metal Mouse. Uh, these two were made to be side by side. They shared a lot of screen time together and they look great together. You could argue that Rat Trap is quite large, maybe larger than you should be, but you put them together, they are brilliant. And this is a, a nice little compatriot side by side, brothers in arms fighting alongside. And you've got a nice contrast of colours here, the brown and the dark red versus the teal, the silver, and the gold. It's a very nice complementary color scheme there. And here he is alongside Big Bot, their version of a Transmetal Optimus Primal Skateboard Gorilla. Uh, now, I think this has been re-released under a metallic paint scheme on his own, but this isn't what this is. This is just the original release that I got. Um, do like how they look together. Not so much for the paint schemes or whatever, but I just think the scaling is right. It's a very good set. They're doing the Maximals very, very well. They're doing a lot of their figures very, very well. But when you get all these three together, it's a very cool set. It's a very nice sight of the Transmetal Maximals. Some three really good bots there, particularly when you put them side by side, even if maybe the sum of their parts isn't so good. But it's a really cool set. And as I say, they just complement each other so, so well. Now, I will just point out, I forgot to put on his tip accessory to his tail. So it actually plugs in a little bit better. So it jams in at a top down angle and then there's a peg at the very base to go on. It gives a bit more of a shark fin kind of vibe, but my bad, I forgot to attach that. Right, now to look into his gimmick mode. He comes with a stand, which I'll put just back there for the minute, which if you've got the skateboard gorilla, the Optimus Optimus, when he's flying in his skateboard mode, it's the same kind of stand. It's nothing really different in that sense. So to get his gimmick of ready for flight, <clears throat> so to get his gimmick of flying jets to appear, you can see this button where the tip of my thumb is, and if you push down on that, he then goes into flight mode. Now in the original toy, these front of these jets could slide forward, but I don't believe you can do that. But what you can do on this is that he comes with two blast effects. 
translucent blue, very nice, and they stick into the back. And that's what he looks like with them on. Uh, they're quite cool actually, they're quite subtle but still there, but they really come into the own with the flight stand. Now, tip of the flight stand, just got a simple rectangular or rather octagonal hole, and there's this plus point you can see on his belly. It's a bit shallow, but to get him on there, you simply just sit him on top. And I'd say that is the best gimmick of this figure. The only problem is, get that stand plugged in is really annoying. To make matters worse, despite the heavy ratchets at the front, he's very back heavy. So you might see, and I bet he'll fall if I do this, moving it so carefully, I've tilted it so it's leaning forward and it seems to be there is so much weight, possibly more die cast and less hollow body parts in the back than say the front, I've had to tilt it to the forward just to get it to stay on there. It's too shallow a connection, it doesn't bite in. Now I've got him displayed as this in my collection. And it doesn't give me that much trouble, but putting it into the light box now, it's fallen over a few times. And it's a shame because it looks really, really good in this mode. If I try and get it in closer, and if I try and zoom in the camera rather than moving him, you've got the pause in full extension, you've got the legs at full stretch, you've got the blast effects on the go. It's a gimmick, but this is this figure's selling point. He does look so cool like this. The wide stance at the front for the arms, how they can split outwards, which the original toy couldn't do, really comes into its own here. Gives a kind of wider flight path. I mean, just look at that, dead on. But you can see he's wobbling. I mean, it's stable enough, but look how easy I can just, there. Barely lift him up, but uh, that aside, he does look cool. It's a gimmick for this mode. Again, I just wish that jawline was a solid piece that bothers me quite a bit but he looks really really cool in this mode he is a flying kitty so what's my view on ptor well i am pleased that i've got it but i think my circumstance will be different to most the big question is going to be firstly is it a good figure which i can tell you about now secondly is it worth upgrading if you got the original release so the figure as a whole i do see a couple of reasons why I was nervous of picking it up and why I felt the original toy, particularly when side by side, this still is a very good figure from back in the day. The Transmetal line is a very good toy line. This does improve on it in some ways, but not every way. But I am mindful that this is one of Transart's earlier releases and the first time they went for a mainstay character. So they were still finding their feet, or paws. They were finding their way into what they wanted to do. And so I'll give them a bit of slack for that, but I can understand why I was nervous about picking it up, thinking, I don't know this company. And normally when a brand new company comes about, you say, okay, why should I invest in you? And if it doesn't, at least on the surface, do more than what the original release did, I can understand people like myself who weren't so keen to pick it up. But as I went on and more and more releases came out, I got their Rat Trap, I got their Tarantulas and Megatron as well. I started going back for the earlier releases like Optimus Primal, I had to go back for Cheetor as well. And when he's with Primal or Rat Trap, they do look cool together. The scaling is very right. There's a nice bit of heftiness here as well. Very good weight. Uh, I will say it does come across a little bit I don't want to say dull. It just doesn't do a lot more than the original toy did. It's got the same gimmicks. So the wings, well, rather the, the wings of the jetpack, it's on a spring motion, which the original toy wasn't, but it comes out of the same place. If you've had the original toy, you're not going to get too many more exciting thrills here. I will say Tarantulas managed to still have a bit of a wow factor to it, and I think maybe this is missing with this one. However nice it looks, and if you're into the Transart line, it will scale beautifully, but it doesn't have that immediate wow factor, even if it does look nice. But that's where I'm going to come on to my second point. Does it look nice? Yes, the chrome, particularly the gold chest, much like with the original toy, that gold chrome is the selling point of this toy, this character as a whole. It's a very pretty figure in that sense. That kind of reflective turquoise, a teal, again, very nice. Transart do a very good job when it comes to paint. But is that where 
the metallic paint kind of stopped. Now I haven't had the original release of this, but I got a picture from Primetime Off, a Primetime Toy, so I'll put that up on screen now, of a before and after of the original release and the metallic paint edition. I will say that whilst you can see slight improvements, it's just that, it is slight. So, the chrome is going to be there already, even if you have the first figure. You're getting a shinier blue and maybe a shinier silver, which for the head, and particularly in beast mode, it stands out more, it looks nice. But that's more or less it. So, is it worth an upgrade if you've already got it? And I would say, whilst it doesn't cost as much as other Masterpiece scale figures, Possibly not. And it is a fine toy, it is a fine figure, it's a good representation of Cheetor. But if you got it originally, is it worth the upgrade? I don't think so. I think you will be perfectly fine with the original in your collection, but I am mindful as well that I think Transart are going to do more reissues. I think we are going to see some of their earlier releases re-released again in upgraded paints because they want to keep the cash flow coming in and it's a bit of a cheap win. I was lucky I missed out, so it was a it was a reissue for me. I didn't necessarily need it to be in a different paint scheme. I was just more lucky that I had missed it first time around. So if you're in the same boat as me, you're fine. But if you've already got it, I don't necessarily feel you need to go back and swap it out. My only particular gripe, and I'll try and get this up on screen here, but I'll put a photo up as well, you might see it better. At the front of the mouth is the paws, the hands, the grabbing hands for a robot mode, and they don't completely close up so he looks like he's got a split down the middle of his mouth and that does bother me a little bit I get why it's there but when you try and take photos of him head on you can't help but see this unsightly gap which I would say is on the original toy as well but could they have not close that off could they have made them square on the hands that to the point that when they put together it makes a solid shape rather than having this constant gap in between that will always be there um, I would have liked some metallic paint on the paws. That's where it seems to stop. That tealy, green, turquoise, lovely reflective on the thighs. And then we've got solid colouring on the front and back paws. The eyes look good, but they are just a solid red. There's nothing else. There's no electronics here. I think TransArt's kind of abandoned the electronics. And that's more or less it. Nice sounding ratchets on the front. I do like that. And I do like the posability of the arms going out sideways, particularly for flying mode. Another plus point is its price. I mean, I picked this up for £65 for Masterpiece scale. Trans are just not as expensive as some other third party offerings out there. So it is pretty good for what it is. It's very good for what it is. I think I come back to the fact of it is one of their earlier releases. So there is a sense of it is a bit more limited than some of their others. But it does look good. I do like him with his flight stand. I do like him in flight. And that's more or less how I'll store him. Because whilst I like the bot mode. And in particular I do like the fact he's he's bigger than a Takara release of Cheetor. The first one. Showing an upgrade. Because Cheetor had one of the more character growths going forward. Uh, I do like the fact that he looks so reflective in beast mode. That I would have him displayed in beast mode. In particular in flight mode on the flight stand. It's one of the few flight stand I would actually use. But I think I'm coming back to the point of whilst it's got a lot going for it, it's very pretty, it's a good character, it's very chromey, of course, as we know they do. It is just a little bit simple, basic. It's good and that's possibly it. And I think to jump straight on to my verdict, I give it three and a half of my star badges because that's what I feel it is. Not to say it's bad, it just doesn't have too many frills. I think the tail can come off a bit, or rather it struggles to go in a bit too easily, so I do worry about that. I feel like you have to jam it in somewhat. Posability is good in beast mode, but I feel that's kind of it. Then the character itself only had the gimmick of the wings coming out and the tail to be used as some kind of long stick. But that's the Cheetor, that is really there for that gold chest piece. That's what I say is its main feature. It looks very, very pretty. And the toy captures it very, very well, but then again, so did the original. Possibly an only gripe I have with the flight stand is the fact that the peg that it plugs into on the underside is just kind of this four peg column that goes into the base. And whilst it's on, it's not very deep. It's quite shallow, so it can easily come off again. And if you catch him, he will fall, if you know what I mean. He will tip off quite easily. So 
I think it's just things to be mindful of. It's it's a good figure and it certainly is worth the price that it is because it is quite a reasonable price for the figure it is, but it's not their best. It is an earlier release from Transart and that's something you must keep in mind. If you're a big Cheetor fan and a big Transmetal fan, then yes, it is a purchase. I would say though, and I stand by this, if you've got the original release and you feel, do I need to sell it and go back and get this one? Possibly not would be my verdict. I think you're probably just fine with the figure that you've got because the chrome is still there. It will still be a very good looking figure. This is a very good looking figure also, but I don't think you need to go through the hassle of swapping out to upgrade it. It's not that big of a difference. And there we go. That is my review of Transart's BWM-03 Metal Panther Commander, their version of a Transmetal Cheetor. I'll put some photos up at the end. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and hit that subscribe button because I will see you on the next one.